Right then, something a bit different for you today. Uh, it's not to do with cars and not to do with games, it's to do with a side passion that I've got, and that's Apple products. Uh, namely, the old retro style Apple products. You know, the ones that used to have the character like this boy here. Um, as you can see, this is a white polycarbonate MacBook. Um, these were in production from 2006 up to late 2009. Um, and they got a bit of extra time when they redesigned it slightly with rounded edges and a rubber bottom. But this is the one it basically took over from the power PC machines of old. Um, and as you can see, it's, it captures the Apple ethos of a striking, good looking design that stood out from the other machines around at the time. You know, this is much better looking than a 2009 um, sort of machine that runs Windows. And um, in some respects, it still retains a lot of its characteristics. You know, it's got the glowing Apple logo, which they don't put on uh, any of their products anymore. And uh, it, ju it just looks very funky. Um, anyway, so this particular one's a mid two thousand nine, so it's quite a bit late on in the in the the polycarbonate range, and it would natively run up to macOS El Capitan, which is pretty useless these days. Um, yes, you could still use it if you really wanted to, but you can encounter all sorts of issues, and not to mention security risks when uh, not getting upstate patches on it. Um, you know, there are ways around this. You could perhaps install Ubuntu on it if you wanted to, uh, which gives you quite a bit of support, I think up to 2027 with these at the moment. Um, or I think you could explore the perhaps installing Chrome OS on it. But what I've done is I've put the uh, Open Core Patcher on it instead, which is a bit of software that allows you to run the Mac OS far later than what this should support. So where El Capitan was 2015, um, you could run this, in theory, up to macOS Sequoia. I'm not brave enough to do that yet. And what I've done is I've installed macOS Monterey on this one. So I'm not pushing it too far at this moment in time. But I just wanted to show you sort of how this machine performs with a macOS system that it shouldn't, in theory, support. And um, we've got to keep in mind that we've got limitations to this machine. It's not a retina display. Um, you know, it's it, it's old school core two duo territory. Um, so one of the first things that you're going to want to do with one of these machines, if you've got one, is install an SSD into it. The, natively, they came with a uh, mechanical hard drive, which is, just doesn't cut the mustard nowadays. So uh, yeah, first thing you want to do is install an SSD, whether it be sort of a small one two eight, or if you go push a boat out and you know five twelve or whatever. Um, they're cheap machines anyway. I mean, this this sort of cost me like £25. And um, I just really wanted to get a bit of life out of it before sort of retiring it. Um, because I'm a big believer in that if you can try and push something old to its limits, if it breaks, so be it. You know, it went out in a blaze of glory. Um, or you could get some extra years used to it, which saves you some money. So it's frugal and, um, you know, it's helping the environment in some way, shape or form. At least I'll tell myself that. Right, so what we're going to do is sort of open them up. And um, as you can see here, yeah, very old school territory, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, barely a widescreen display on that. Um, we've got the got some discoloration to the keys, uh, standard territory for these. The palm rests aren't too bad, to be honest. They usually split all along here. And this one's okay. Um, it starts to go a little bit there. Um, and as you can see, just around the bezel... It's basically where it sticks down onto the palm rest and the magnet's a bit too strong for it, it ends up breaking the brittle plastic over time. But what we're gonna do is power up from a cold start. Um I got an illuminated light there. Uh, one thing I like about these actually, I'm gonna just turn it over while it's doing that, is I really love this. That's a great touch, isn't it? The battery metering. Um, you know, that's really, really so cool, and it's something that Apple took off with their devices, um, which is quite an annoyance and my opinion right so as we can see even with an ssd in this that the booting sequence is quite a bit slower than you'd expect from a well you know even a retina machine onwards so keeping in mind that some of the parts for this one you know it is our machine and we're trying to get it to do far more than it actually should do um another thing that's worth keeping into note with this i don't know whether it'll do it or whether it won't but uh, I had to install um, Mac fan control on this because I found that the uh, the fans were wiring up like to full speed. 
but you can actually get the little program uh, which sits in the sort of taskbar up here to uh, control the speed of the fans and um, you know make them behave themselves. It's not going to kill the machine doing that. Um, yes, it does get warm from hours and hours of usage, but it's not anything really, in my opinion, that's going to kill it off. I've been using this one for months on end, and it's been absolutely fine. Right, okay, so we've got into the, the boot here. Look, um, pretty familiar territory if you've used Monterey before. Um, gone with sort of a nice purple background for it. The first thing I found with this when uh, running this day to day is that you'll notice up here, um, it might not be the same for you, but it is for this particular machine and for me is, I need to manually connect it to the Wi-Fi here. So, you know, I connect it to my hub here and then hopefully it should connect. There we go. Right. So after every single time I boot it up, it comes up with this message, but in actual fact, it is connected to the Wi-Fi, I believe. Um, right, just to show you what the spec of this machine is to run this. So I've gone on to about this Mac and um, hopefully what we'll do is get our information about this machine in a second. He says, let's just try that again. About this Mac. Oh, there we go. I didn't know press it correctly the first time. Right, so it's a 13 inch mid 2009 uh, with 2.13 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. Uh, it's only got four gig of RAM on it and very paltry graphics. Um, what? Let's just see whether to do a boot from the internet. One thing to take into account with this is I would recommend running Google Chrome on this because I think Safari is just a wee bit slow. Um, so if we go onto Chrome, you might sort of discover that this is actually quite slow in itself to boot up. But it depends on your, your usage. You know, if you're sort of kind of used to um, maybe like a Chromebook experience or something like that. This isn't sort of too far off that. Um, let's go on YouTube, shall we? Uh, let's see how quickly it goes into that. Yeah, so it's not too bad at all, is it? Um, for a machine of this sort of age, it's sort of, sort of like 15 odd years old now. Um, you know, it's it's not too bad. Um, as you see, I've been watching sort of videos and doing a bit of research. Look, Luke Mahoney, pretty good. Um, yeah, so... In all, in all in all, this isn't a bad little sort of machine. One thing to take into account is you won't be able to run um, sort of graphics heavy applications like iMovie and stuff like that on this. But anything that um, runs or needs a later operating system to run is usually okay. Like sort of Spotify app is absolutely fine on this. Um, it doesn't have AirDrop on this particular model, so you want to keep that in mind. Um, but uh, yeah, most of the applications seems to be fine. Sort of anything graphic intensive, like sort of weather app and stuff like that, where it has animations, you can have sort of a hard time running that. Uh, but as a sort of a, a netbook um, with sort of basic usage, office tasks and stuff like that, these are absolutely fine. And by installing a later operating system, like you really breathe a new breath of fresh air into these. Um, and you know, I think you get a couple more years usage out of them, to be honest. This one is in semi-retirement doing uh, syncing all my CDs to it because it's got a CD drive on the side um, to run on my old school iPod. So, yeah, um, it's, you know, mileage is going to vary depending on what you really expect from these sort of machines. But for the price that it is uh, and how easy it is to put the later operating systems on it, I would say go for it. Absolutely go for it. Um, and I hope that sort of influences your decision slightly to pick up an older Mac and be a little more interesting than the crowd. So, um, cheers.